So the highly anticipated Boto Chapter 66 finally dropped and it did not disappoint. This chapter was simply mind blowing. And I know we already went through the spoilers for the chapter, we got the leaks and so on, so we have an idea, a general idea of what's gonna happen in the chapter, but we still need to read the manga. I always say this because a lot of people substitute actually reading the chapter for just reading the spoilers because they believe that, oh, I got the spoilers, so I know what's gonna happen. No. Just know, you need to read the chapter. And aside from supporting the actual creators by actually bringing up the views and the view count for the manga chapter on Manga Plus, you also get to have the full experience. And I'm not talking about just getting the full manga panels and getting them in high quality. I mean just having the full experience of the manga itself or the chapter itself. Because one thing I always tell people, when you get the spoilers and you get leaks for the manga, when you go over them, they might not be the same thing when you get to the actual chapters. You might see some words being changed here and there you might get a different sentence completely because again those people are just translating the manga it's not gonna be like the exact same thing so you need to read the actual chapter to understand what is being said because just one word trust me one word alone can completely change your entire perspective or the meaning you once had for the chapter itself just one word can do that trust me and we have a somewhat similar situation in this chapter as well so we're going to go over it and you know we're going to get into the shit so you know what let's do it So we're going to start with the first panel of the chapter which basically confirms that Kawaki has his karma and he got it from a model. Now we already covered this in the spoiler review and we also covered this in multiple videos on the channel as well talking about how Kawaki actually got the karma back and I mentioned that and I went into complete detail and you guys can go watch a video I'm going to link it above so you can understand how Amado really gave Kawaki the karma and how it makes sense because I know a lot of people are going to be confused about this. Now they did confirm in this chapter that Amado did give him the karma but they didn't go into specific detail as to why and how so you can go watch my video to get more information on that so the first panel in the chapter started Amado saying you want to protect Lord Okage right you need more power to deal with code enough to take him down so take it for yourself brand new power in the form of a karma that's purely a weapon you have the base criteria and I can make it happen it's all up to you Kawaki the choice is in your hands now this panel and exact verbiage is taken from chapter 59 of Boto where a model first offered to give Kawaki the karma so this is basically tying everything in together and shows that it was basically foreshadowing the future of Boruto or Kawaki. Now I did say in my video that Kawaki did make up his mind and decided to go get the karma from Amado. But this chapter basically confirms that Kawaki didn't know that he had the karma. And Ada explains it in detail. Ada says that I guess Kawaki didn't have a choice. Looks like Amado never intended to let Kawaki decide whether he wanted karma back or not. He'd already finished reconstructing it. He knew that Kawaki would hunger for more power. He probably restored karma when he replaced Kawaki's right hand. All that was left was to motivate him to want it. So what this chapter basically confirms is that Kawaki didn't decide to go get the karma from Amado. Amado gave him the karma with his right hand without him knowing. So this is kind of weird for me because one thing I will say is that even though Kawaki didn't know that he had the karma, his reaction to noticing that he has the karma is kind of weird, right? You'd expect him to like be shocked or something, but he didn't even care. He didn't show any emotion at all, right? So it's kind of weird to see him react like that when getting a karma, which is something he loathes so much, right? You'd expect him to be shocked or something, but he's like, he's okay. He's just going to use it. It seems to me that he had an idea that he had the power, but he, he wasn't sure. So I feel as if he did know that he had the karma because he sensed it earlier before he he decided to go after code and then decided to use the power when naruto was attacked right so i think that's what happened i don't think he was completely oblivious to the fact that he had the karma that's just my take on it we also got a great panel of kawaki which shows off his karmification state which looks pretty cool i'm not gonna lie especially the close-up of his eye right it looks pretty cool i can't wait to see this animated because it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome i we did get one scene of kawaki animated with the karmification i think it's called karma version 2 or are you gonna call him Kawashiki? It, it technically isn't Kawashiki because the entire point behind Borushiki is that 
Mo, uh, Momoshiki is in control of Boruto's body, right? It's still Kawaki here controlling his own body with Ishiki's power. So it's, it technically isn't Kawashiki. You get what I'm saying? But if you want to call it Kawashiki because he has the horde, then I guess, I guess that's fine. It'll be my guess. But yeah, this panel of Kawaki looks pretty cool. Not gonna lie. So after this, we move into the actual battle between Kawaki and Boruto or Boruto because Momoshiki is in control of his body. So he technically isn't Boruto, but yeah, Kawaki versus is Boruto. And this fight basically started off with Kawaki using Ishiki's dojutsu by sending the rods that Ishiki normally used in his fights at Boruto. And Boruto dodged this ability which is pretty weird in my opinion. I'll get into it because I have some gripes with the power scaling in this chapter but there might be an explanation for this but we'll get into that later. So Kawaki is using Ishiki's dojutsu here which I did predict in my video about Kawaki's dojutsu, new dojutsu and his 8 paths ability. Now a lot of people disagree with me, right? A lot of people said that it was madness, right? I mentioned in my video, in the starting of my video, that Kawaki's dojutsu is gonna be like the Sharingan, it's gonna be like 1 Tomoe, then 2 Tomoe, then 3 Tomoe, and he's gonna gain different abilities each time he goes up to a different Tomoe. I call them spokes because it's somewhat similar to the Dharma wheel, right? So you can call them triangle spokes, whatever. But I said that each time he goes up to a next level he's gonna get a different ability and he's gonna continue growing until he gets the eight spokes or the eight triangles and he's gonna have the eight paths ability and he's gonna have eight different abilities or maybe nine if he has an other path i went into detail about all these abilities uh time manipulation water manipulation duplication mind manipulation um gravity manipulation like all sorts of abilities life manipulation i went into all of these abilities in my video and I think it all leads to Kawaki unlocking the wishing ability that Ishiki has or Ishiki had but he, did, he couldn't use it in Jigen's body because it, Jigen was not a perfect vessel. That's why Ishiki really wanted Kawaki's body. So I think that that's basically what is confirmed in this chapter. We see Kawaki using the Ishiki's dojutsu. He has about four spokes here. And then later on in the chapter, we see him drop to two, drop to one, then go back to four. He's basically using the ability exactly how I predicted he would use the ability. So I'm going to pat myself on the back because a lot of people said that it was nonsense. And we got it right because when I posted the video, a lot of you guys got in. You guys agreed you guys said that it made sense so we over here we got it right we got it right and we're gonna continue getting it right of course we can be wrong not saying that we can never be wrong but i'm saying bro we got the big brains over here we always thinking us outside of the box we need that in this community right and i think we got it right in this chapter so kawaki is using ishiki's dojutsu abilities he also used the cubes so you know ishiki had the ability to summon cubes from another dimension he called that ability Daikokuten. So we have Kawaki summoning the cubes, dropping them on Boruto, and we have this panel of code basically assessing Kawaki here. Now this, I, I think this this panel here is really really important. So code says Daikokuten, which lets the user retrieve things from another dimension, and even Sukuna Ikona, which shrinks various objects, is Amado trying to make Kawaki into a second Ishiki. Now the verbiage about Amado trying to make Kawaki into a second Ishiki is kind of interesting to me. The reason being is that I made a video earlier today. If it's today, I think I'm going to post a video tomorrow, probably. Uh, if I post it today, then it's going to be today, right? So I made a video earlier today talking about Ishiki's psyche influencing Kawaki. So I spoke about Kawaki not acting like Kawaki in this chapter. It seems a little bit cold and how he killed Boruto without even like hesitating. Even, not even shedding a single tear, not even like tearing up or feeling any kind of remorse, right? He just seemed like a robot. He just seemed like somewhat evil in a way. He's not evil, but somewhat like distant. So he seems somewhat distant. And I said that this could be the effects of Ishiki's psyche within the karmification. So I mentioned like the similarities between Boruto taking on the essence of Momoshiki when he goes into this Boroshiki form and Momoshiki himself takes foot in Boruto. This doesn't happen when Boruto uses the regular karma. It only happens when he goes into this Momoshiki state, this Boroshiki state, this karmification state, right? So if Kawaki is accessing his karmification state, remember Ishiki is dead. So Ishiki can't possess Kawaki because he's gone, his spirit is gone. But Ishiki's DNA, his essence is still within Kawaki. So instead of Kawaki or Ishiki taking hold of Kawaki's body, 
Kawaki takes on the essence of Ishiki himself, thus this displaying the tendencies and the demeanor of Ishiki, being more cold, more distant, and nonchalant about everything, right? So even though it's in his characterization, Kawaki is like that because that's how Ishiki raised him, is not technically this, is not always this way around Boruto or Naruto, especially in a situation where he needs to kill Boruto, right? We know his love for Boruto and Naruto specifically, right? So you'd, you'd expect him to show some sort of remorse or emotion in this situation. So I went into this in detail in that video, you guys can go check it out. But this panel kind of implies to me that this second Ishiki thing, it, it kind of reinforces that in my mind, right? So I don't know, I might be reaching here, but <laughs> you know, that's just what I think. So a lot of things happened after this, we have Boshiki and Kawaki going back and forth. Boshiki used a Rasengan and Kawaki, Kawaki just swiped it away with his karma, which means he absorbed it. Then Kawaki used a Firestar Jutsu without weaving any hand signs and Boruto just absorbed it as well because he has the karma. Then they continue to go back and forth. Kawaki uses a scientific ninja tool body to send spikes at Boshiki. Boshiki just dodged it as well, flying through the air and doing all sorts of gymnastics and acrobatics. I don't know what you call it. I think it's one of the two. But yeah, he's moving through the air very quickly. They then mimic Naruto and Sasuke from the final valley where they clash their hands together. So Kawaki isn't using any specific ninjutsu because Kawaki doesn't have a jutsu like that. So he basically just has his scientific ninja tool arm um, transformed and charging at Boruto and Boruto is using his Rasengan. They both clashed, you got the same scene you got from the final valley where they kind of blow away the surrounding, Naruto and Code gets kind of pushed back but they, they aren't blown away technically, right? After this happened, Boruto seemingly starts to wake up which gives Kawaki a chance to pin him down with the rods. Then he tried to drop the cubes on Boruto to finish him off by saying game over. Then Naruto jumped in and saved Boroshiki. Naruto and Kawaki had a brief conversation talking about how far he'll go. Naruto letting him know that he's his son and he should not be ridiculous. Because Naruto is not gonna just stand there and allow him to kill Boruto. Which he did end up doing in the end, but only because Boruto pushed him away and allowed Kawaki to stab him. But before we get to that, we have a panel that I need to like talk about before we get into like the, the last part where Boruto actually gets stabbed, right? So Kawaki says, Boruto, do you remember what I said to you once? And Boruto replied saying, oh yeah, I remember. Then you have a panel of Kawaki saying, I'll somehow get rid of your karma, I swear. So this is a callback to, I believe it was chapter 59 probably, or chapter 60, where Kawaki promised to aid Boruto with getting rid of his karma. So yeah, they're kind of giving a callback to that specific scene. Then Boruto says, and I've come to realize today that we are gonna have to go through with our last resort plan. And Kawaki replied saying, yeah, unfortunately. Then Kawaki charged at Boruto using the same scientific ninja tool arm to stab right through his chest. Then the chapter ends with Boruto lying on the ground, um, apparently dead. Now I want to talk about this last part right here, right? So if we go back to the panel where he says that, I'll somehow get rid of your karma, I swear. Now I have a problem with this because they're implying that this means that he's going to kill Boruto when that wasn't what he was saying. He's saying that he's going to save Boruto and then you could imply that he's, he's saying that he's going to save you from yourself and all that stuff by killing you. But I, I can 100% say that that's not what he meant. But they're trying to imply that that's what he meant, so yeah. Now it could mean something else because people are alluding to him using code as his vessel or to put in, put in a karma on code because it did also discuss a plan to do that which Amado said would be a foolish plan because code already has a karma. Now that's not the only problem with this plan. This plan is the worst plan I've ever heard, right? Now, now bear with me for a bit. I'm going to put out a video talking about this specifically. Uh, but yeah, I, there, there are a lot of problems with Boruto giving Code the karma. There are a lot of problems. And assuming that Code is just gonna, gonna allow him to resurrect within him is just complete nonsense, right? <laughs> like, bro, the holes in this plan, if this is what they're gonna do, give Code his karma, like, the holes in this plan is, is so, like, humongous, right? It's so human. When you talk about plot holes, like, it's gonna be crazy, right? If they don't explain that away, in some in some tight like they have to knit this so tightly for it to work right because it's so nonsensical that plan right it's in so many ways i'm gonna i'm gonna create a specific video talking about it because 
I see a lot of people talking about this being the plan and that's exactly what's going to happen and I'm not saying that it won't because it's possible because we do know these writers they don't think about a lot of things when they do it they just do it right so they could still do it and then we have the plot holes later on right so I'm not saying that it won't happen but there are so many problems with code, giving code is karma. So many problems. I'm going to make a video on it. But yeah, all in all, this chapter was pretty good. Um, one thing I will say is that we didn't get to see Naruto in his sage mode do anything. So they hyped up Naruto with the wisdom of A shit and he didn't do anything in the chapter. Like, why? You know, <laughs> why? Um, no, I expect Naruto to either fight, either fight Kawaki or code like one out of the two of them he's gonna fight one of the two of them before like we move into the timescape or before we leave this surrounding area i think naruto is gonna fight someone i hope it's not kawaki i think that kawaki is gonna overheat uh, because you remember he did that earlier on when he was fighting gar and he used all that ability right because he's still his body is still technically a ninja tool so he can overheat when he uses too much power so I think that might happen. Then we have Naruto versus Code. So I think that's what's gonna happen. That's my prediction basically. But yeah, all in all this chapter was pretty good. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section. And let me know what your thoughts are for future chapter reviews. Right? I wanna know how, what you guys think about how I format the chapter reviews. Do you guys want a more in-depth analysis or do you guys rather like, I just skim through it and just give my general idea. I don't know, man, I, I just do whatever comes to mind when i'm recording these videos because originally when i started recording the video i was just i was thinking i'm just going to do like a, a synopsis of the chapter and give my general idea and then when i went through the panels i was like no i need to talk about this i need to talk i need to talk about this i need to talk about that like bro <laughs> i don't know what's wrong with me but yeah i don't know let me know let me know what you guys think about it and if you're new to the channel subscribe and hit that notification bell for new content i have theories on boruto's resurrection and how I think the series is going to continue going forward. So stay tuned for all of that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.